This is the second video of my series that explains on how to make maps for Mountain Blade Warband Persistent World Mod. If you have not watched the first video in this series, I recommend you do because it explains the important steps required to get your map started. If you have watched that video, you should open up your Warband and then select your PW 4.5 module click the configure button under the video tab start windowed mode should be checked and under the advanced tab edit mode should be enabled by checking that box and click OK now start up your warband like you normally would after your warband has been started click the play button and instead of joining a game like you normally would when you're playing PW you want to edit a scene. If you remember in the first video, we pasted our map seed into scene 2 in scenes.txt. Now we will edit scene 2 by selecting blank scene 2, the second map down from the top of this list in this drop down menu. Then we click the edit scene button. Wait for it to load. And now we are walking around in the map. <coughs> that we chant with our seed. However, there's not much you can do while walking around with it. If you want to spawn an admin horse, press F11. And now you can ride around an admin horse, which is very easy. If you want to change your gear and equipment, press F9. You can do this any number of times, and you get a random set of clothing and weapons. If you do this enough time, you will actually get an admin. Which is really there are other commands by pressing F1 through F10, but these will be used in a later video where I explain how scripted objects work. So do not worry about this right now. What you should do right now is hold down control and tap E. This starts edit mode by opening up the edit window. By using the WAS in D keys, you can move around. You can move by using W A S and D keys. You can move around with the camera by clicking with the left mouse button and dragging. You can rotate the camera in any direction. By pressing E, you can raise the camera, and by pressing C, you can lower the camera. By double tapping any of the movement buttons you can move twice as fast in that chosen direction. This is basically the same as spectator mode in Warband multiplayer. But it's different because you have this edit window on the left side of the screen which has various tools that you can use to change the map to be how you want it to be. I will go over the modes one by one. The first mode, ground texture paint, is very simple. Simply, all you have to do is select the paint texture color, the paint texture that you want the terrain to look like. So let's select earth. Radius, weight, and hardness. The hardness is how jagged the edge of the texture will look. The weight is how fast the texture is painted down, and the radius is how wide you are painting. You can see I'm painting earth texture. I can change it to anything. I can change it to pebbles. I can change it to snow. Paint snow. And the hardness is at zero so the edges look nice and fluffy because the edges mix with the texture that's already there. As you can see the grass is still growing on the snow. However if you close click the close button in the edit window save changes 
press escape, say yes, click back, go all the way back to the main menu, click the play button again, and go back to the scene. The grass in the area where you painted will be gone. If you want the grass to come back, ground, edit ground texture paint and hold down the mouse wheel, mouse 3, and you paint back the default terrain that was determined by the map seed. And then you close and go back to the main menu and reopen the map again and the grass will be back. Next mode I'm going to show is the ground elevation mode. It has the same set of tools that were found in ground texture paint mode. Radius, hardness, and weight and they have the same exact effect except for they change the elevation of the terrain. You can make it up, down, you can smooth jagged edges which is very useful when you're making cliffs and you can change the level which is very useful for having terrain be flat at a specific Z level. By doing this, see, it's completely flat at Z level 30. 100% flat. And as you can see, the grass has not moved with the terrain. But if I want the grass to move with the terrain, all I have to do is close, go out, go back in again. And the grass is now with the terrain. Also, if I use down, Yeah, every time you go out, it resets the radius to 2 and weight and hardness to 100. So you have to reset it back again. If you go down farther than Z level 0, you will see this blue thing that appears. By pressing the H key, the edit overlay will go, you can turn it on and off. Uh, this blue layer is actually the water level. However, you cannot see it unless you close say yes, leave, go back in. You have to do this a lot while map making, and it might be annoying, but it's required. So you have to get used to it. Let's find that hole we made over here. Now you can see, there is water at that blue thing. How cool is that? And if you press the H key, the edit overlay will reappear. The edit overlay shows everything that you cannot see in the game, like invisible objects, like invisible barriers or AI limiters, which block only animals from moving. They are not visible in the actual game, but in edit mode you can view them by turning on the edit overlay. The next part I will show you, the next edit mode I will show you, is color ground color paint mode. Click this button and it looks exactly like ground texture paint and elevate again. It has radius, weight, and hardness. However, I need to move the window up so I can get to the bottom of the window which has the color sliders. And However, there is no way to drag the window up that far. It is almost a bug in this for some computers where your screen is too small. You cannot get the entire edit window to be visible. However, I've installed a program called Alt Drag, which allows me to hold down the Alt key and drag any window to move it, no matter where I'm dragging from. There will be a link in the description of this video on where you can download Alt Drag if you have this problem. Now you can see color sliders for red, green, and blue. You can change it to be literally any color. And then you can paint the color, just like you do ground texture paint. 
It's great for adding more effects to your terrain, like if you want black stone to have obsidian around a volcano, or maybe you want to have really dark green grass in a swamp, or maybe you want to just have hot springs, and you want to have And you want to have, to, you want it to look like that there are microorganisms in there that are changing the color of the water. You can even do that. That doesn't change the water, but you can change the color of the terrain below it. But anyways, that is the end of this part of my tutorial. In the next part, I will explain the edit objects mode, edit AI mesh mode, and edit weather mode.